Hi, this is Larissa Kason, Director at Marion County Public Library System. And I'm Kathy McManus, Circulation Services Manager. Welcome to Librarian's Day Off, More, More Than, than reading, reading Books. books. We decided to make this uh, YouTube program to use our new expression booth, uh, which is a sound isolation booth that the library was able to purchase as the result of a grant um, and a donation, primarily a donation, but also a grant. And um, so we wanted to just dip our toe into making videos. Yes. So um, just a little bit more about myself. I have worked for the library system since 2016. Um, and I became director in July of 2020. Um, and this is actually my second career. I had another career before then, so this is my first library job. And I've been here since 2014 and started out as a library assistant, moved my way up, and in 2020, I believe August, um, I was made circulation services manager. And again, this is my <laughs> second job, too, that I've had career-wise, and uh, first library job. Yes, so um, what we plan to do in this video series is really just talk about um, what we as librarians do um, when we're not at the library. <laughs> um, so a lot of us have a lot of varied interests and hobbies and we just wanted to um, allow people to get to know us a little bit better. So um, what we're gonna talk about today is uh, what new and fun things we did over the summer. So Kathy, yes. what about you? So, amongst traveling and house construction, we embarked on a very new to us adventure by buying a camper. Ooh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, my first experience with camping was when I was young. I believe I was about somewhere between eight and 10, mm -hmm. and my parents decided to borrow a camper from someone so that we have a weekend, long weekend, experiencing it, seeing if it was something that we'd want to do more of. Well, it was a pop-up tent camper, <laughs> and there were eight of us in this little camper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went away for the weekend, and it rained the whole weekend. That was the last time my family went camping when I was young. I imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then as I got married, we did some tent camping in the early years of our marriage and when mm -hmm. our kids were young. It was kind of a cheap vacation. Mm -hmm. And then I did a little camping when I was doing some long distance bike riding. But then there was one weekend when my husband was putting the tent away and it was sap and wet because another rainy weekend. Right. And he said, we will never camp again until we have a camper. Okay. <laughs> 20 years later. Right. <laughs> We have purchased our first camper, and it is a Forest River R-Pod, and here's here. a picture of yep. it. We're going to put a picture in here. Yes. So how did you decide on that camper? Well, it's vastly different than the one I originally thought I wanted. I thought I wanted a drivable one, about a 25-footer, about mm -hmm. the same size as our digital bookmobile, because mm -hmm. I had driven that, and I felt very comfortable driving a vehicle that size. But we do have some limitations of space at our house for storage. And honestly, those vehicles are kind of pricey. <laughs> right. <laughs> and sure. Everybody during the pandemic decided that they wanted to start camping because mm -hmm. it's a vacation they could do in right. the United States. And outdoors. And outdoors and, and be a little more safe. And it drove the price of campers up astronomically. Right. So, then we started looking at uh, something that our current vehicle, which is a small compact truck, could pull. Mm -hmm. That narrowed it down significantly. Okay. And I was stuck home <laughs> in isolation with that <laughs> disease that everybody was getting, <laughs> right? A virus. And I decided to do a little searching online, and I fell in love with this little R-Pod. It's a perfect nice. size for us, for two people. Mm -hmm. It's all self-contained. It has shower, kitchen, queen-size bed, and a pull-out couch. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So more people could sleep in there if you wanted? Yes. They say two people can sleep on the pull-out couch. I'd like to see it happen. Though. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, once you bought it, have you taken it out, or what have you we done? We have. We've gone twice. We've um, gone to uh, Flatwoods KOA and then mm -hmm. uh, Cedar Creek Camp, State Campground. Mm -hmm. And there's a little story attached to the Flatwoods KOA. We originally right. <laughs> were supposed to go up to uh, a campground in Morgantown. Okay. 
And last minute we got a call saying our reservation was canceled because they had a campground emergency. Yes. And we did was... not know <laughs> what the emergency was. Yeah, that was the fugitive at Chestnut Ridge yes, Park. <laughs> yes. So last minute I was trying to find a place to go camping on a Friday at about 3.30 and mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to be successful. Um, so we ended up at the KOA in Flatwoods. It was interesting. It's mm-hmm. right behind a hotel. Okay. <laughs> I believe it's owned by the hotel. Okay. Because uh, you check in at the hotel, at the hotel. desk. Hotel. Yes. Hmm. But we were allowed to use all the anemones there. We got to swim in their pool. Mm-hmm. And it was a nice first shakedown camp. Right, weekend. right. <laughs> yes. That's good. Um, do you have any other trips planned? This weekend we're going to Holly River State Park. Okay. Mm-hmm. Going to do a little hiking and uh, just enjoy the the nature there. Yep, very cool. Um, What resources, I guess, have you used? Um, So we have a book at the library here. (laughs) Um, Where should we camp next? Um, It it lists every state regionally and Mm -hmm. then the top about four or five campgrounds in each state. So that was pretty cool to look to see right. what West Virginia has to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's the camper's um, backpacker Bible telling you all the different equipment that you need. Yeah. And then, of course, when you're camping, you have to cook. Right. So we have Guy on fire. Ooh. And Very cool. He, yeah. He, huh. um, he kind of tells you about the different ways to cook over fire, whether it is propane, whether it is charcoal, or an actual campfire. I see that in the... This subtitle talks about um, tailgating. So, as football season's coming up, if you want tailgating ideas, that looks like yes. a good resource. <laughs> yes. And then this one was a little bit over my head. It's uh, uh, Cooking Wild, Kate, Kate's Camp. And it has a lot of dishes in it that you use for hunting. So, it's, oh. you know, you bag your game and then you cook. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool, too, because yeah. hunting season's coming up as well. And then so. on on um, Clio, there is a uh, resource there. You can search where you want to go, either by 10 miles, 50 miles, kind of an unlimited miles. Mm-hmm. And then it'll bring up all the landmarks, all the historical sites in the area where you're going to be so That's that you cool. can go um, adventure into some new places that you wouldn't have even known of. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. So you're enjoying the camper. I am. <laughs> Um, so my new um, obsession <laughs> that, I, that I started this summer is actually canning and preserving food. So, um, I don't know, maybe a month ago when the peaches were all ripe at the same time, I was ruining the fact that, you know, you only get peaches kind of like two weeks out of the year and they're all ripe simultaneously. And what do you do with all those peaches? You know, there's only so many cobblers and pies and whatnot that you can consume all at once. So. That was kind of, that idea was kind of floating around in my head. Then I have a friend who has a used book business and she was having a yard sale to get rid of books that she didn't want to sell. And I came across this book at her yard sale, Preserving Made Easy. Um, And I kind of flipped through and there was a recipe for peach mint salsa. Um, So in addition to peaches, I have a, I have an herb garden with mint in it that's just going crazy. So (laughs) it kind of takes over the flower bed. So I was looking for something to do with the mint. Um, But I didn't get the book. I was like, I'm never going to preserve anything. And I got home and like 30 minutes later, I texted her and asked her to put the book aside (laughs) because I couldn't stop thinking about it. So you should always get it when you initially want (laughs) it. (laughs) I don't know. I figure if you wait 20 minutes and you still want it, then that's a good sign. (laughs) So, um, what I liked about this book was it's small batches and simple techniques. So it's hot water um, canning, not pressure canning. And many of the recipes um, are like two cups of stuff. So like two of the little pint jars or something. So it's, it was like a good basic foray into canning. And it's not overwhelming. It's not overwhelming, exactly. And my first, my very first time trying it, the only thing I had to buy were the jars. I had enough stuff in my um, kitchen, enough equipment in my kitchen, I didn't have to buy anything too much. So um, I wanted to try it out to see if it worked, and um, it did. (laughs) So I successfully like canned things and it was, you know, sealed appropriately and everything. 
Um, one of the nice things about canning is if you do it wrong, if like your jar doesn't seal, then you just have to eat the stuff within like a week or two. <laughs> so it's not like it's completely ruined. You just have to consume it then instead of, you know, saving it um, for the winter or whatnot. So anyway, I, that was successful. Um, so then after that, um, I have, I'm going to get a half share of a, of a CSA farm share. Um, that comes from Terra Alta, and I get that delivered to me, um, or I, I pick it up at a delivery location. So um, this time of year, there's a lot of tomatoes, mm -hmm. like a lot of tomatoes. So the next thing I did was another recipe from this same book um, that was um, tomato salsa, just like a, you know, just a regular tomato salsa, jalapenos and, and cilantro and that kind of thing. Um, so that went well too, and it was it was pretty tasty. So now I've got the canning and preserving bug. So <laughs> I'm planning um, several other things. So this book has one that's good that's um, or that I like anyway. That is um, cranberries. You use fresh cranberries and dried cranberries, so it's like a relish um, that sounds good to me. There's an apple butter recipe in here that sounds good. Um, in our library collection, we have this one, Canning and Preserving Recipes from Better Homes and Gardens. And I, what I've marked in here so far is blueberry chutney, which sounds good, and apple nutmeg conserve. So a lot of fall flavors. We also have another one that I think is interesting, um, Canning and Preserving Without Sugar. So if you're trying to avoid added sugar or adding sugar, this is a good one and it has a lot of really good reference pages in it fantastic reference pages like how much fresh produce is needed for a quart you know so oh, it's yeah. like reverse engineering stuff and then the classification of fruits according to pectin and acid content when you get real you know into the real mm -hmm. sciencey portion mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then one more thing that um, another staff member of ours had, which, so this is not in the library collection, but the Ball Blue Book of Canning. So it's got a lot of, um, you know, basic canning information. Well, I think so, that's great. I mean, you, yeah. in the middle of the winter when you're craving something a little summery yes. tasting, you can just crack open one of your jars and exactly. enjoy that with yes. your fish or chicken. Exactly. The peach mint salsa is fantastic with fish and chicken. So very good. Um, so I will say this. We've mentioned a couple books during this session, we will put um, the names and authors of those books that we have in our collection in the description box below here. We'll type that stuff in so you can find it. Um, one other thing on canning and preserving, in September, I believe, the Mannington branch is going to have um, an intro to canning program. Um, and they're gonna be making apple butter that you can make in your crock pot and then showing how to do a hot butter bath um, preserve on that one. That's great. So it can, it, you know, it can be a little intimidating if you don't have the resources to help you out with something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I was helped not only by looking at this book, but a couple friends who do canning and, you know, you talk to other people. There's of course, you know, Facebook groups and, and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I was able to start out just like really small in a small way with things that I already had in my kitchen. Since then, I have purchased a rack, um, which is better than what I had before. I, I might get some. I've been using tongs, <laughs> but they have actual like jar lifter mm -hmm. things that, 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 that you might, should use. That might be yeah, exactly. <laughs> the tongs have been working, but anyway, I should probably do that. So, um, okay, so we. I swore that this was going to be more than reading books, but we are going to talk about reading books. <laughs> So, what are you reading now? Right now, well, I just finished reading um, Beach Road by Emily Henry. Mm -hmm. It was a, a romance with a little bit of a dark edge to it, I Ooh, thought. Okay. Um, maybe a little little darker than some of the other ones that she's written based mm -hmm. upon their, their life history of the main characters. Okay. And then I just started a new one last night called Cursed Luck by Kelly Armstrong. Mm -hmm. It's an urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. talks about... Uh, uh, unweaving curses and uh, weaving curses and kind of the uh, paranormal psychological type. Right. Uh, That's pretty cool. Things. So I like that. Um, I am very much of a genre reader, so I do read things similar to that. Um, mostly what I read are mysteries and um, 
fantasy or sci-fi. Uh, I also do read romance sometimes, but I am reading too because um, I commute to work. I always have an audio book that mm-hmm. I'm listening to. So I'm actually listening to The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams, which is fantasy, like epic high fantasy. Maybe not high fantasy, but at least epic fantasy. So it's the first in a trilogy, and although there's a book four was released maybe a year or two ago that is set in the same world with the same characters, but a different time period. Um, at least I think it's the same characters. Anyway, it's a different time period for sure. So the audio book of that is over 30 hours. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably going to be, I'm listening to it from Libby. It's probably going to get returned and I'll have to put myself back on hold yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, I'm reading French Press, which is a cozy mystery. It's part of the Coffee House Mystery Series. It's book six, although it's the first one I've read. <laughs> Usually I read them in order, but I just picked up book six. It's by Cleo Coyle. Um, it's about a coffee house in New York City, and I think it's one of the better written cozy mysteries that I've read. Sometimes cozy mysteries can be a, a little uh, simple. Yes. So um, it's not as very well written. So I'm enjoying that one. So um, we would like to do this program monthly or so, mm-hmm. at least to start with. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but do it monthly. But one of the things that we want to do is be able to um, answer viewer questions. So if you have a question, you can go ahead to the Ask the Librarian page on our website. Um, there's a little button at the top right-hand corner of our website or the chat box, actually. Um, and you might get to chat with me. Yes, you might get to <laughs> chat with Kathy. Do you want to talk about the chat The chat function? Well, the chat function is really um, an easy-to-use uh, resource that we have on our website. Uh, www.mcpls.org and uh, you just click on the chat with a librarian ask your questions we will answer your questions live and uh, we can continue to talk over days if we need to go back and forth if you can't get to your answer right at the moment so um, the chat's available when we have librarians available so it does sort of match our open hours Mm -hmm. Um, but it is another way that you can contact librarians So, um, I don't know, just a little bit more about this expression booth. So, um, like I said, we had a donation and we had a grant. So, we actually have three people in here. So, it's Kathy and I and Liz behind the camera. (laughs) And then um, we have a ring light and a tripod and a camera and this microphone. Much of this stuff is available for um, people to use um, on site in the expression booth, mm-hmm. not not to circulate or take home. So if anybody has any interest in making a podcast, making um, a video show for YouTube or TikTok or um, recording music, we have somebody who records music in here. Mm-hmm. He was here last week recording music. Um, we have some equipment that you can use. We just ask you that you have a library card. Yes. To reserve the booth. And if you call ahead, it's probably best. Yes. Um, Just like with our conference rooms, call ahead and book. So um, it's very easy to get a library card. You just need to be a resident of West Virginia um, and, you know, have your driver's license or state issued ID. Or if you're a college student, Fairmont State, Pierpont, WVU, a student ID with a proof of address in West Virginia, um, we can get you a library card. So pretty easy. Um, So we look forward to seeing you um, in the future. We have a lot of library employees who are interested in participating with us. So we'll be talking about, I don't know. um, Hiking, running, possibly cooking. Yes. Um, Maybe stained glass making, um, amusement parks. I don't know what, um, there's another employee who wants to do it. She's involved in the theater. I don't know if that's what she wants to talk about or not. So. Anyway, we have a lot of topics that we can talk about, um, about what librarians do when they're not here. So, thank you very much for tuning in, and we hope to see you next month. Bye.